Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. My name is Daphna Lender. I'm glad you're joining me here today. And this episode of TRF Tuesday is about taking care of a child's inner hurt. Now, what, I, what do I mean by inner hurt? So there's the physical pain that comes with getting an, an, an owie or a, having um, an illness. And accompanied with that is the emotional pain that comes with the vulnerability of feeling pain. And um, there's also the issue of the inner hurt of just living day to day and having things happen to you that hurt your feelings. For example, being at school and not being called on by the teacher or not being picked by a friend to be on their team uh, or being rejected by a group of friends or otherwise being slighted, like being told, you know, that you did the math problem wrong or you were reprimanded. And those things, they accumulate throughout a day for adults too, but certainly for children. And those are inner hurts. Those, they get accumulated and they sort of pile up. You can imagine kind of a reservoir of, of um, some wounds and they, um, some kids can shake it off. Some kids have the resiliency factor and others are already sitting with a lot of pain and a lot of loss and a lot of fear. And so those wounds, those little everyday wounds affect them in a way that's much more impactful because it really sets them to the top of what their tolerance is for being, um, for, for containing pain. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about when I talk about inner hurts, but we all have them. Let me make one, um, one point very, very clearly. And it, one of the major attachment phenomena, what is it about, because well, this is a, this is a webinar in part about attachment is how our parents regarded us, took care of us, related with us when we were vulnerable, meaning sick, hurt, afraid, rejected. And so what your parents did or grandparents or caregivers did to take care of you or how they regarded you when you were sick or when you were hurt informs you non-consciously about how you're going to address your child, the child in your classroom, the child in your care, or even your partner, um, your adult partner. And the important aspect of this relationship of caring for somebody who's vulnerable is to be able to what I call, we call it to contain. And it, I, it's a metaphorical idea of I have a reservoir, a container of space available in my heart, in my physiology, in my mind, to be able to accept your pain and be able to encompass it and hold you, whether it's physically or metaphorically, and say, I got you, I'm with you, I can tolerate this, this is something that I will accompany you through, and um, it's going to get better, or at least I won't leave you, okay? And so that is the uh, message. And it starts from very, very young. When a baby has colic and there's no solution to it, no matter how, you, how many you know, soothing balms you give a baby who's a few weeks old, what you have left is you walk around with them, you shush them, you rock them, you bounce them, you try all sorts of ways, but mostly you're, you're holding them on your body and you're giving them a sense, I'm with you. And that gives the child the physiological feeling of I, my nervous system, I'm lending it to you and we're together with this. And even if the child, the baby, the baby's pain doesn't reduce significantly, that just the fact of having somebody to hold you and stay with you helps the baby's neurological system to become more resilient and say, it's not that scary to be in pain. Those are the moments. Okay. And so, for example, when you're sick with a cold and you, you're laid up in bed, um, the, the child is laid up in bed, it's not just, okay, you can stay home as opposed to, um, you know, kind of being like, oh, shake it off, shake it off. It's not that bad. You're being um, 
you know, you're being um, a weak or in my day, you know, the, the kind of um, reference to um, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and, and don't complain. It's not only acknowledging that they have an illness, but also taking care by bringing them um, comfort measures and staying with them or checking in on them, bringing them a wet washcloth or making their, uh, um, if they have a um, kind of a runny nose or something to put some, some cream or something to alleviate the um, chapped nose, things like that. But also sitting with them and maybe reading them a book or stroking their hair or somehow giving them the sense that you're with them. Now, I think that that's pretty, you know, par for the course. It's like parenting is, is part of that is, is not just instrumental care, but emotionally accompanying the child. Well, let me give you an additional example that I really like from the TheraPlay repertoire. I'm a TheraPlay trainer and supervisor. When a child comes home from school or when a child is comes out from comes in from the outside world and they seem like they're in a really bad mood they may be really thorny and prickly and they may be um you know you ask them what's wrong and they say no nothing and and i don't want to talk about it or they get they they seem hostile and they're you're trying to be nice to them but they won't talk to you one thing you can do is you can do a uh, lotion act an activity with lotion that we call taking care of hurts where you take the child's hand you simply sit down and you say um let me see if you have any old scratches or owies or bruises or um or calluses today and then you just you literally take the child's hand and you just hold their hand and you start looking and you just say oh i see that you have a little owie here i'm going to take care of it for you and have your lotion ready and you just take now, of course, the lotion doesn't have any medicinal aspect to it. It's just something to do. It's something to show I can, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. And then you just say, oh, you have a little scratch right there. OK, and then you look carefully on each hand and you look on each finger and then you turn it over and don't ask questions. Don't say, do you like this? Is this OK? what happened here why did you get a marker here you know why are your hands dirty nothing like that no questions just if you notice even an old scratch or any kind of like callus or something like that just rub it in really with firm touch so it's not tickly and then go on to the other hand and you're going to do the same thing where you're just going to look in the child's hand and take care of their hurts all the while what it, the sense is is that the touch and the soothing um, rhythmic aspect of, of the, of the, of the um, strokes gives the child a sense of relaxation, like, oh, this is feeling a little bit softer or better, my inner hurts that they may have accumulated. It's like I'm addressing them by, um, essentially you're pretending that their hand needs lotion with a, because they have an old scratch, but actually, what it is is you're attending to their inner hurts and they might you might find that they start chatting with you and you might they might sigh oh or then they might say okay do you hear or let me see you know if they're open you can say can i do you want me to also do your elbow or if they're it's they have shorts on you can say you know your feet or something like that or your knees why does this work it works because they don't want to talk and be vulnerable about whatever happened the insults that they received or how they failed but you doing something proactive to take care of them physically with the kind of nurturing touch really helps to soften that defensiveness and allow them to safely feel the vulnerability and then they might chat with you they might tell you what's on their mind at that point here's what i want you to do only acceptance and empathy no questions and no problem solving easier said than done right i mean we all as parents we want to solve our child's problems or say what did you do to contribute it or no i i'm sure that that's not how they meant it all you want to do is acceptance acceptance is like oh wow that happened okay thanks for telling me empathy is wow that would have been hard oh okay yeah that's too big got it so it's mostly your tone of voice and your facial expressions that says presence i am with you and i accept accepting you exactly the way you are that's 
also really nurturing. So if a kid says, oh, I, nobody wanted to play with me on the playground, nobody likes me. Now that's heartbreaking for a parent to hear. And you also might feel like, you know, I went through that when I was a kid too. And you might want to tell the child like, no, no, that's not true. You do have friends. Don't you remember you have the two girls down the block that play with you? Even though it's hard and even though you know that it's not necessarily true that she doesn't have friends, it's best to start with, oh, well, that would be lonely, okay? Or something like that, or just be like, oh, wow, that sounds hard. You know, the mat some kids don't like, like the really empathic tone and they can sound, um, it sounds to them like you're being, um, like you're looking down on them. So just make it more matter of fact. You could, first with teenager, you could just say, oh, that sounds sucky. I don't know, that sucks. You know, you could just say something more matter of fact or more, you know, more to the point. Um, and what, um, what we find is, is that if you do this kind of lotion activity where you're taking care of the child's hurts, um, on a routine basis, when they're not feeling grumpy, then when you do it, when they are feeling irritable, they're much more likely to accept it. And also a beautiful, beautiful um, intervention is to have the children in your home if they have somebody hurt somebody else, let's say a child hit another child or hurt them. What you do is, and you have to practice this ahead of time and make this like a ritual where you take care of them, is that the person who hit or hurt the um, other child can, um, they need to cool down first but don't lecture them and don't tell them, you know, to say sorry, because an empty um, apology is actually makes things worse. Um, just let the child cool down, the one who hit, and then say, you know what, because you hurt um, your sister, that's why you can take some lotion and you just literally walk them through to make it feel better. And you take the child and you put their hand on, you know, and you say, now come over here and you go, no, okay. And you put it right up to the child that got hurt where they hurt. Like, this is nice. Okay. You're making it feel better. You're making it feel better. You're talking to the child who hurt. That makes that child feel like I did something to um, sort of exonerate myself. Like I'm not a bad person and I'm taking care of the person I hurt, which also increases the empathy for that person and reduces the likelihood that they're going to hurt them. Now, that is such a profound intervention, and we have TheraPlay for the classroom, where this is routinely uh, practiced in circle time. We call it sunshine circles, and they sit in a circle. The children have um, the, the parent or the teacher, and you can do this with, with children if you have multiple children in your home, give the child a, a, a bit of lotion on their hand and then they ask the neighbor to their left, Johnny, do you have a hurt today? And if the child Johnny says yes, then I will put the, the um, lotion on my neighbor on their hand. And then the classroom says hip hip hooray, Daphna took care of Johnny today. So you were praising the person who's the caregiver. Then Johnny has to do it to the person on their left. And this is something that's first modeled by the teacher. And the um, whole idea is that it increases empathy. And then when a child gets hurt in a classroom, the children will then just spontaneously come up to the teacher and say, teacher, teacher, I need some lotion. Johnny got hurt. I need to take care of him. Isn't that beautiful? Another aspect of this is that if there's a child who is routinely the one who's giving out the hurts, you know, who's the instigator. One thing you can do is as the parent, the caregiver, the teacher, is if that incident happens, you can go directly to the person, who, the child who hit, but try to do it in a way that is private. So try to kind of corral them to an area where everybody is not watching and you take some lotion, or if you can't use lotion, it's okay, it's symbolic. You can take a cotton ball. And you can take the cotton ball and you or the, or the lotion and you can talk to the child that hurt. He's probably looking like this. He thinks he's gonna get punished. And you say to them, you know, um, let's call him uh, Darian. You know, Darian, um, you had, you gave, you, you gave um, Michael a hurt. So if, 
you gave a hurt, it means you had one to give away. You had a hurt inside. So I want to take care of you. And um, what you can do if he was the one who hurt the, the, uh, his, um, his uh, classmate, Michael, is you take the lotion and you put it on their left hand on their wrist. So right here. And you say, you know what? As you're talking, you're rubbing it in, whether it's a cotton ball or lotion. You say, you know what? This is going to help because if this is where your um, your wrist your, goes to your heart, okay? This blood goes right up to your heart, and maybe you had a hurt in your heart, and that's why you had a hurt to give away. So I'm taking care of you, okay? And then you just sum it up. Takes 30 seconds, not that long. You don't review the classroom rules. What are we supposed to do when we're um, when we have a conflict? We're supposed to come to the teacher. I'd prefer you not do that at that time because this is a very emotional moment, and I prefer that you take care of that child who hurt and then have okay, it's time for you to take care of Michael, and then help them to walk over, have Darian to walk over and do the same thing that you did too. Um, for Darian, you he will put lotion where he hurt Michael, and then it's over. What did you do? You took care of the source. That child who hits has pain. He feels left out. He feels like he doesn't belong. He feels that like he's a bad kid. That's why he's doing it a lot of times, unless he has a regulation issue and um, you know has, has a need for maybe um, more um, physical stimulation and things like that. Putting that aside, I'm talking about a kid who hits because he um, appears aggressive, but really it's, he has the pain inside. And so by taking care of him and then making it possible for him to sort of uh, provide restitution for his classmate, that really gets to the source. And imagine, just imagine if we had this happening in our classrooms and in our daycare homes all around the country or all around the world, how much restored empathy and connection and how much we could reduce shame in kids um, and young people um, if we practice this kind of um, ritual. So, and I'm suggesting that even though the parent might feel like, wait a minute, or the classroom teacher might think, this is actually like maybe reinforcing or rewarding the child who hit. I can understand that reaction. And I think it usually comes from the point of view of the parent or caregiver or teacher that's really feeling very, very helpless and that as the adult, you feel like I, I can't control my environment. I'm responsible for these children. And this kid is a real, he's really, really wrecking havoc on my environment. And so I'm resentful. I don't have enough support myself. And so what, I'm supposed to take care of this kid and be nice to him when he might be hitting my other kids who are very vulnerable, or maybe he's hitting me. And I don't feel like it. And I understand that. I think though what you would want to think about is if you're feeling resentful, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling like you're depleted, that's likely why. And you have to find a way to get your needs met so that you can take kind of a pause and um, resist the urge to kind of persecute or, or tell that um, hitting child um, you know, to go to the naughty chair or to um, give them a timeout because ultimately it's all of our goals to be able to connect with a child and to be able to um, really get at the root of what's hurting them so that, that you can teach them to be caring individuals, to be good citizens in your classroom or, your, or in, your, in your home community. And so this is a way of really kind of connecting with the humanity, both of the child and yourself. So I hope that you will um, consider um, and find many ways that you can take care of a child's inner hurt. 
and um, also consider taking care of your own hurts. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week. Be well.